In this video, we're going to take a look at a few different techniques and tools that you can use for the purpose of extruding and more specifically extruding with hard surface alphas. So let's get started by focusing in on the object we want to work on. I'll hover over this part of the model, hit the H key, and I can hold the Alt key while clicking on the visibility icon in the Vox Tree layer panel to hide everything else. Now I'm going to zoom in and let's use something like this screw pattern. And as I zoom in, I'll hit the W key to turn on wireframe. So get a little bit closer, you can see it's fairly dense, but it's still probably not going to be enough to get this to extrude accurately. So I'm going to right click and drag up and down to increase or decrease the depth level or intensity. And I will use something like the extrude brush. You can use the dabs draw mode in order to just to make a single instance or we could use the stamp draw mode. I'll just use dabs. So I'll click here and we can see the result. I'll turn wireframe off. It's pretty rough. This particular version I took into Photoshop and I applied blurring to the outer edges and I also increased the scale. This one is 512 by 512 so it's a little bit more pixelated. Let's try this one. It's still a little bit rough. So we're going to have to do something to compensate for the lack of density here. It's just like working with pixels in Photoshop. You're going to get more stair-stepping and jaggedness if you don't have enough resolution. So even though upon initial visual inspection you might think you have enough, but you really don't. And you can see the polygonal stretching here. So I'm going to undo. And let's switch to voxel mode and see what that looks like. Let me change this to 3 million. Okay, so it's a little bit more dense, but even with that, it's still going to be a bit rough because we're using hard edges. So I'll use this one. I'll turn wireframe off. Let's go to extrude. Again, we don't have quite enough, even though that's a relatively dense mesh. As you're cutting across polygons, you're going to get this jagged effect. So, let's use this one. Same thing. But, as I increase the scale, now we can start to see a difference. And that's because for the same brush here, we've got quite a bit more polygons. So let's go down. Let's scale our brush up. And let's go back to using this one. You can see quite a difference. When you don't have the edges blurred in Photoshop, then it's going to be quite a bit more jagged. Let's reduce our scale so it's not quite as stretched. Now we can smooth all at the bottom, but many times that's not what you want. You don't want to smooth everything. So let's undo. What I'm going to do while I have this in voxel mode is I want to show a technique that you can use to supplement your resolution without having to increase the overall density of the object. One is you can use the copy tool in the adjust section of your tool panel. What this is going to do is copy a portion of the surface, whatever you brush. So I'm going to create another child layer here from this parent. I'll click that plus icon and that's going to create another child layer. I can see the 
level of resolution on this object or the parent object so I know I'm going to have to go up quite a bit. Let's go to the bottom of the Vox True Layer panel and click the increase resolution icon quite a few times. So we want to match that or go just above it when we make our copy. Now with this new empty layer I want to switch to a different shader so that I can see it better as I brush. Let's choose something like this and if I want I can choose copy only surface. I'm going to turn wireframe on and I'm just going to click right there. If I look around let's ghost this instance and we have a little bit of extra depth here that I don't necessarily need. I can use the cutoff tool and cut or trim that away but there's a better option. I can go ahead and just clear that by clicking this X icon. It leaves the layer intact, but it just clears the object from it. So let's check in the toolbar, copy only surface. If I want it to extrude a little bit, I can do that right here, but in this case I do not. So again, let's click right here and I can hide that parent layer and so it's just a very thin object at this point. I can go to the bottom and resample it. This way I can have better control over just exactly how dense it is. Let's hit OK. All right, let's turn the wireframe off. So now I'm gonna go back to this brush alpha. I need to get out of the copy tool because I'm done with that. So let's go to the extrude brush in voxel mode. And again, I'll choose the blurred version. I increase the depth and click there. And now, if I want, I can cut everything outside of this screw. I can trim it away by going to the cutoff tool. Let's choose the ellipse and I get straight up on it. Hold down the shift key and it trims everything outside of this. Now if I want, I can smooth all. You probably want to assign a hotkey to this function because you'll use it quite frequently. Okay, so I'm going to give it the same shader, or actually it's a different shader. Okay. As you can see, it blends in so well with the parent object that you can't tell it's separate. Let's go ahead and stop the video right here, and we'll pick up the next video by looking at some other techniques and tools. Stay tuned, and thank you for watching.